now going to tell you a little bit about the further spread of Indo-European languages, and in particular in Britain, where we have our best data. So at the same time that the corded ware complex was overspreading Eastern Europe, an equally impressive phenomenon as reflected in the pots people made and the tools people made and the buttons people buried in their burials and the whole series of ritual artifacts that were left behind in graves was spreading in Western Europe. And it was these bell beakers were one of the, it's named after the bell beakers, these bell-shaped beautiful pots that they made that first appear in Iberia in Spain about 4,700 years ago and then spread within 200 years to Central Europe. And once they get to Central Europe, they go everywhere. So they go to Britain, to Ireland, they go to Central Europe, and they go all the way to Poland, into Hungary, into Southern, into Northern Italy. And a question that we wanted to ask is, what was the ancestry that was spread? In 2015, we had some samples from Germany, where they had spread 200 years after they originated, and they were like the corded ware, lots of steppe ancestry. So we collected at the beginning of this year 400 new ancient DNA samples, um, and, uh, um, and many of them were from bell beaker associated burials. Here in red is where the bell beaker associated burials were. And we looked at their ancestry, and we got a surprise. And the surprise is that in principal component analysis, the same type of analysis I showed you before, they were not all in the same place, not like the Yamnaya. So different from our previous supposition, it was tempting to think, based on the previous work, that always a genetic culture, people making pots in a certain way, would correspond to people who all look genetically a certain way. But this is not the case with the bell beakers. They fall into two clusters, one over here, one over here. The cluster at the bottom is almost all Iberian people from Spain, where it first developed, and the cluster over here is almost all from Central Europe. And what we were able to show is that there's almost no shared ancestry between the Spanish practitioners of this culture and the Central European one. What that means is that the bell beaker culture spread between these two regions through communication of ideas, not through movement of people. Kind of like cell phones spread across people of different ancestries, a lot of archaeologists interpret the beaker burial tradition is a kind of ancient religion, and it's one that was clearly copied. In France and in Hungary, we even have graves where we have men and women buried side by side, both with beakers on their heads, next, buried next to their heads, but some of whom have steppe ancestry and some of whom didn't. So it's clearly a kind of proselytizing belief system, which allowed new people to come in. So, but so what we see is that there's not a lot of, of steppe ancestry in Spain, but there is a lot in Euro in Central Europe. But once this belief system gets to Europe, it spreads further through migration and brings the ancestry with it. We know this best in the case of Britain, where we have 150 people that we reported at the beginning of this year, between 6,000 and 3,000 years ago. Here's a beautiful beaker burial in Britain. You see, here's the beaker pot. There's a second burial with another beaker pot in this grave. And what you can see is that the people who brought this tradition replaced the population that had just built Stonehenge. So the last big stone built stones at Stonehenge went up about 4,500 years ago. Um, and uh, at that time, the ancestry of the people was all blue. Uh, it was all first farmer type ancestry. But bang, at 4,400 years ago, every single sample has typically 90% or more steppe ancestry. So there's a mass movement into Britain that essentially almost completely replaces the local population. And people in Britain today are largely descended from this new wave of people and share very little ancestry from the people who built Stonehenge. In Iberia and Spain, meanwhile, at almost exactly the same time, we see something very similar. This is a different type of plot, but this y-axis is measuring the proportion of ancestry from the Far East, and ultimately from the Yamnaya. And what you see is that there's no change between 6,000 and 2,000, uh, uh, 6,000 and 4,000 years ago in terms of the proportion of steppe ancestry. Um, but then beginning 4,500 years ago, a new group, the steppe ancestry people, begin to come in Iberia. There's a 500 or 300 year period of overlap, and then the two groups mix together. The mixed population is not as dramatic as what you see in Britain. It's 60% from the indigenous local farmer population, 40% from the steppe people. But the coloring of these dots is the males in this group, and we're coloring them by their Y chromosome type. So there are typical farmer Y chromosome types, which are colored here in different shades of blue, and different steppe Y chromosomes types, which are colored here in red. And what you see is that after 4,000 years ago, the farmer Y chromosomes completely disappeared. It was 100% Y chromosome replacement. And what this is telling you is that only 40% of the ancestry in this population 
is from the step people, but 100% of the Y chromosomes are. So what that means is that the people coming in completely displaced the local males. That is, they had preferential access to local females, and their kids had prefer, and their the newcomers kept having preferential to access to local females generation after generation. So it's telling you about a complex interaction about these between these groups, which could have hardly been a simple interaction.